Today I will be reacting to why it's so hard to become the 51 US state. Okay, but before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, thank you so much, my friend. It's the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. You guys have been suggesting this one a couple of times. Well, split. This is a day in American history that will live in infamy. On January the 6th, 2021, just a few critical minutes before the invaders, attackers, occupiers, or whatever you want to call them, had overcome the Capitol Police at around 2 p.m. local time, the chief of the U.S. Capitol Police Force and the mayor of Washington, D.C. put out urgent requests for guard backup. But it took more than an hour to get formal approval for their deployment, and then nearly three more hours for the first guard reinforcements to arrive. This okay. shouldn't have happened, but it did. And that's because D.C. is not a U.S. state. Normally, the National Guard stationed in other states are under the command of those states. You know what, my friends? Uh, this may sound dumb, I, I admit, but I never understood that well what ended up happening in uh, January 6th, right? Uh, I know it's something related with the election uh, that some people thought maybe not fair, but I, I don't know for sure. Um, I remember this was really, really big news here. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, um, I feel like that showed, and correct me if you disagree, that uh, America is kind of divided when it comes to politics. I wonder if, if you guys agree with that. States governors. But here, they're under the command of the president. And as a result, the District of Columbia National Guard was on hold until it got the approval of the Department of Defense to deploy forces. Obviously, okay. this delay was costly. And the very next day, the mayor of Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser, asserted her stance that D.C. needed to become a state. It's true, if D.C. had been a state, the National Guard's deployment would have been faster as clearance from the DOD wouldn't have been needed. And yet, this isn't even a major reason as to why most residents of D.C. want statehood. During the height of the pandemic, each state received $1.25 billion, yet D.C. only received $500 million, losing out on a huge $750 million, only because it wasn't a state. And by the way, this is still not the main reason that residents are fighting for statehood. If you've ever been to D.C., you've probably spotted the words taxation without representation, or at least something very close to it, on t-shirts, ad boards, and D.C.'s favorites on license plates. Yes, the standard Washington, D.C. This is a bit confusing to me again, my friends. Um, I'm sorry for uh, being a bit lost on this one, but uh, okay, this is not a state, but Washington is a state, right? So basically the city wants to become ind independent. Independent? Is that <laughs> the case? I, I'm actually a bit lost on this one. Taxation without representation. But why, if Washington is one of the states, um, maybe I'm, I'm missing something. The license plate design has featured some form of the slogan, taxation without representation. Even former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton's presidential limo plates had the slogan. And that's what the... Re Wait, what? So if they agree with that, why not change it? Residents of one of the highest tax-paying districts want representation in Congress, the right to self-governance. You see, historically, D.C. was formed to be a seat of government, the political capital of the U.S. by Congress, and free of influence from any state. Congress chose Maryland and Virginia to give up chunks of their state, and the capital city of the U.S. was born. Because D.C. became the capital... Oh my god, okay. ...for the very reason that no one would influence the government, Congress was allowed exclusive jurisdiction, and residents were not allowed to vote for just about anything. Not for a president, a senator, or a house representative. However, residents didn't accept it. There were strings of protests and draft bills followed, none of which had passed as a law. But hundreds of years later... D so this is so confusing. Oh my god, give me a second. Now I have to research this. Okay, this is a bit of a different reaction, I feel like, because I... So this is not in Washington. So, oh my, okay, that's weird. Because that way, I'm sorry, because that way DC really is basically a city that does not... Okay. DC, America, let's see this. Sorry, my friends. I know this is a bit different than normal, but... I really want to understand things. 
So Washington DC. Capital of America, okay. Colombia, not the, okay. Holy moly, this is so confusing actually, my friends. So Washington, there is the state, I thought this was in the state, oh my god, okay, now I feel them. Okay. DC residents were eventually allowed to... I get it now, yeah, this Washington DC basically is in Maryland and Virginia, right? But really have no representation, that's insane. Or am I off on this? But in the other end, it's so small that... To vote for the president that would move into their city by virtue of the 23rd Amendment in 1961 and voted for their first time ever in the 1964 election. The district never went on to be represented in Congress though, besides for a single non-voting delegate in the House of Representatives. It was at this time that DC residents began to push for statehood, which is arguably a constitutional right under Article 4 of the Constitution. But to become a state, a territory must fulfill a number of requirements. First of all, a territory can only become a state where it is not a territory found within another state. If it is, the state that it is going to cede must consent. DC is all good on this one, as it is a district not within any state. The second requirement is that the citizens from that territory must petition in favor of statehood. DC is set here as well. Back in 2016, there was a referendum and 86% of residents voted in favor of statehood. The third okay. is that the state to be territory must have sufficient population and resources to afford a state government and contribute its fair share to the federal government. DC checks this box as well. It has a larger population than two other states, Vermont and Wyoming. And res Okay, so this kind of makes sense. Residents of DC pay more in federal taxes per person than in any other state. So with all of the requirements being met, what comes next? Well, standard procedure to become a state involves drafting a constitution and getting approval from residents, Congress, and the president in that order. DC almost always gets through the primary stages of drafting and ratifying a constitution, but gets shot down by Congress. You see, DC is a historically Democrat district. So Democrats in Congress favor the statehood of DC as it affords them two more Democrats in the Senate if it becomes a state. That's a huge advantage. And because of that, it's highly unlikely that any Republican senator would vote in favor of statehood, which we've seen. So the real barrier to entry as the 51st state is more so politics than anything else. Now, if DC... Okay, because in America you guys go, yeah, basically is a bit different, the election system. Dude, I, I know this sounds dumb, but I really believe you should, you should control the votes in the country. If there is one more vote for Republicans, they become the, the ones in the House. If they are one more vote for Democrats, let's go that way. Even here in my country, this is a mess, by the way. They also use, use a weird system that, uh, that some votes go actually to trash. It's crazy. DC became a state, wouldn't that mean the federal government seat would be within a state and that would contradict the very reason that DC became a district in the first place? Well, yes, that's true. And also kind of confusing, I know. But DC's government has already thought about this and it has come up with a plan. Take a look at this map. The part carved out at the center will include the White House, Federal Supreme Court and other federal officers and will be called the Capitol. It will be under the exclusive jurisdiction of Congress. The rest will be the state of Washington DC, but the DC won't be standing for District of Columbia anymore. Instead, it'll commemorate former DC resident and African American social reformer and writer Frederick Douglass. DC would stand for Douglass Commonwealth. But DC isn't the only one eyeing all the benefits that statehood brings. 1,500 miles south from DC is another territory that is vying to reap all the benefits that come with being a state, Puerto Rico. Mm. Back in 1898, the US won the Spanish-American War and acquired a group of islands collectively called Puerto Rico. Although Puerto Rico ended up having limited self-governance, a few years later, the US began treating the island more like its own. Because of the Jones-Shafroth Act, anyone who was born in Puerto Rico became a US citizen. The act also allowed residents of Puerto Rico to elect their own non-voting representatives to the House, known as the Resident Commissioner. But Puerto Ricans still couldn't vote for a president or have a voting representative. Decades later, the island had its own constitution that made it an associated independent state within the United States. Okay, yeah. Por Puerto Rico, I think this like a, uh, you know, a country. I, I, I don't even associate Puerto Rico with, with America for some reason. 
Many were happy with this new status, as referendums in 1967 and 1998 both resulted in the majority of Puerto Ricans voting to maintain the status as Commonwealth. But serious demands to become a state started to come around the early 2000s, and as these demands for statehood started to grow, a referendum was finally held in 2012 with the highest ever turnout of 78%, and for the first time ever, Puerto Ricans chose to become a state in the union with a 61% majority vote. After the referendum though, then-President Barack Obama received three letters, one from the governor of Puerto Rico, one from the House representative, and one from the governor-elect. The governor and the representative urged him to begin the process of admitting Puerto Rico as the 51st state, while the governor-elect said in his letter that the results weren't clear. The representative introduced a bill a year later to admit Puerto Rico as a state, but it didn't go through. There were two more referendums, one in 2017 and another in 2020. The 2017 referendum saw 97% of votes favoring statehood, but with a voter turnout of just 23%. Obviously, the score was exaggerated and also said to be boycotted. The last one in 2020 is by far more reliable, with a turnout of 54%, and still a 52% majority voted for statehood. But Puerto Rico's statehood isn't as close as DC's. For one, Puerto Ricans haven't shown clear enthusiasm about being a state. Sure, the Yeah, I, w I was about to say this, uh, you know, Puerto Rico seems really split also, you know, so if they are not sure, I think that that could be a mistake, but uh, DC is, is a bit different. Last three referendums resulted in a majority. But what I know, my friends, I maybe th this is probably quite a more complex topic than uh, the the video, um, than the, the way the video is, is presenting it vote favoring statehood, but with the low turnout percentage, it's still unclear if the majority of Puerto Ricans prefer it. On top of that, you have the political interests that will be affected if Puerto Rico becomes a state. Puerto Rico has a population of more than 3 million, so if That's it attains statehood, it will have two senators and up to five house representatives, at the expense of big states like New York and California, who have more seats than what's average. If, against these odds, Puerto Rico still achieves statehood, the benefits are immense. Puerto Rico has been hit hard by natural disasters as well as a tanking economy. So, unlike DC, which has one of the richest residents in the whole country, federal relief packages are seriously needed. While on current political terms, Puerto Rico can't basically they will benefit a lot. Can't even vote for the president, so statehood will guarantee political participation. Though of course, DC and Puerto Rico aren't the only ones in the race for statehood, with other territories like Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands lagging far behind them. But it seems likely that DC has the best chance of all of them at becoming the 51st state, as residents yeah, have almost like. clearly expressed their desire for statehood. But the road is long and hard, and there hasn't been a new state since 1959. I'm honestly just curious as to how the US flag would look with 51 stars, but nevertheless still quite beautiful. The journey to becoming the 51st state continues. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> this was kind of great actually. I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I favor state. Uh, sorry, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, um, leave a like if you had fun. Um, Funny. Funny is always relative in these type of videos, to, to be fair, but it's more about learning and uh, I thought it was a great one. So, see you guys next time. Bye.